Welcome back, everyone. Appreciate you joining me here today on this Cabral Concept, episode 3008. We're going to be talking about cellulite. We're going to be talking about the reasons for cellulite and also how to overcome it. So why is cellulite created in the first place? And then how do we reverse it? This is really important. So I've done shows on cellulite before. It's been probably two years or so. I wanted to revisit it. I wanted to share with you what we've seen work in our practice uh, month over month, year over year. And also, also, just explain maybe cellulite from a better standpoint or easier to understand definition. So remember, each one of us is born with a certain amount of adipose cells or fat cells in our body. And typically the cells that we're talking about with cellulite is between the skin and the muscle. So subcutaneous fat, not the visceral fat that sometimes get interwound with our organs or even our muscle, and typically around the abdomen. So what I want to share with you then is the subcutaneous fat. It's kind of the fat that you can pinch between the muscle and the skin. And a lot of people say, well, maybe when you're a baby, you can see a little cellulite, but then you kind of grow out of it. And as a child, you don't have cellulite. And then maybe somewhere around the teenage years or later years in life, 40s, 50s, and beyond, you start to see cellulite when you never did before. Why is that? I want to explain that here today. So essentially, think about cells as little balls, like gel balls. Just think of them like that. And the reason I want to give this analogy, it'll make sense in just a moment. The there are there are there is some research that shows you might be able to add more fat cells. But in general, let's just say we have fat cells, and what we do is we don't add more. What we do is we increase the size of those cells. So think about a water balloon or that gel ball. The water balloon starts out in life as just a small amount of water in that balloon. And then as we put on weight, the balloon can expand in size. Now, think about you have an entire pool full of water balloons. Small amount at first, and then all of a sudden, the balloons continue to grow. They swell. Now they swell above the surface of the top of the pool, right? They've all increased their volume. And when you look at the top of the pool, it's not uniform, right? The top of the pool filled with water balloons would look all dimply. It would look bumpy. And it's the same exact thing with what happens with cellulite. Our fat cell volume, so the volume is the fluid inside the fat cell, begins to expand, and then it presses up against the skin. And it does so in a very specific way, which I want to share with you in just a moment. And as it presses up against the skin, we see the dimpling. And that's why sometimes you don't see the cellulite initially, but you do when you sit down. Why? Well, think about how the skin is being pressed. The muscles are pressing the uh, fat cells against the skin, and now you can see a little bit of that dimpling or the bumps. Another way to look at it is like this. You've got those gel balls that I spoke about earlier, and they're inside that netting. I don't know if you've ever seen those kids' toys, kind of the squishy balls or the stress balls, and you squish it on one side, and it presses those gel, the little gel balls against a netting. And as they push against the netting, all of them look normal in the, in the, in when it wasn't squished. You squish them, it pushes through the netting, and you start to see the dimpling all along one side. Same exact thing happens when you sit down again, because cellulite is typically on the thighs, so inner thighs, uh, hips, the butt, the outside of the thighs, and sometimes on the abdomen. Now, you can get it really anywhere, but those are the most prominent areas. So just going back to that net philosophy or that, that squish ball uh, philosophy with the mesh is that your body has its own connective tissue or connective cords or specific fascia. And when the fat cells get pressed against these connective cords and around them, it creates the dimpling, dimpling on a then more permanent basis. So sometimes at first it's just seated or um, pressed up against something, and then eventually it looks more permanent, meaning it's always there. And that's when those fat cells, which are filled they're, they're with more volume, get permanently pressed, again, we can reverse this, but I'm saying right now, permanently pressed against the skin, showing the dimpling, all right? So now that you know what cellulite is, we can say, okay, well, what causes it? Let's give you the normal ones, the regular ones. Okay, regular ones would be a poor diet. 
Like that's it. And, and I'll talk about inflammation in a moment, but you're eating a lot more processed food and you're gaining weight. Okay, so you're increasing your fat cells. You're increasing the size of those fat cells. The second one would be losing muscle, not exercising. Because now you're losing proper shape to the actual limb itself. Let's talk about like the quadricep and the hamstring in the back of the leg, right? Or the glutes, largest muscle in the body, right? And you're losing that shape. So now the connective tissue is not exactly where it should be. Fat cells continue to grow because you're lowering metabolism as well. Another one is overall inflammation. A lot of it's from processed food. We talked about a little bit about that yesterday. Higher omega-6s, lower omega-3s. We see that all the time in our practice. We need to lower those omega-6s. Because inflammation, I have an old school podcast that you should, you should check out called Toxic Fat or Toxic Water Weight. Well, I might have both of those shows. So let's try to link those up today at 3008. StephenCabral.com slash 3008. Inflammation alone can cause your body to retain water. And where your body retains water is oftentimes between the muscle and the skin. So subcutaneous inflammation leads to puffiness or in the cells themselves. The cells, the adipose tissue become inflamed themselves and hold fluid. So that's important. So now we have inflamed fluid holding fat cells. Really important because they've still swollen. They've risen, they've risen above the pool, right? Or they push through that mesh net, those, those gel balls. All right, the next one is this. And this is this hits women harder than it does men. And women are more predisposed to cellulite, cellulite than men are. As we as women start to get more estrogen dominant, it can cause more cellulite. The other one is lower levels of testosterone, which simply may be more protective for muscle in the body. So when we look at those and we see what's happening to women in their later 30s and then definitely in their 40s as they're moving more towards menopause, they might be getting lower levels than of their sex hormones and and that includes testosterone as well. So how do we combat all these things? Let's talk about that right now. So, and I've given these remedies before, but I wanna reiterate them and maybe in a, a little bit different way and maybe in more of a systematic fashion. But the first thing is we want to clean up our nutrition. We don't want to go hypocaloric because we don't want to lose more muscle. So what we want to do is just eat good calories and cleaner calories. So good, clean foods using the functional medicine detox to get started or the uh, fat lossity system, which is being renamed, and then moving into a more Mediterranean style diet. So an anti-inflammatory based nutrition plan. All right. Lower on the processed foods, of course. Higher in the good micronutrient-dense foods, without a doubt. Okay. The next part, exercise, right? And we're not talking about like super lightweight bicep curls. No, we're talking about squats, deadlifts, lunges, and step-ups. And I'm not looking for you to hurt yourself or create any personal bests. I'm looking for you just to get started. It can be bodyweight squats. It can be sitting down on a bench. Don't lose control of your body. Don't disengage your core. Stand back up. Do that 10 times. Okay, that could be a start. Doing Romanian deadlifts, working your hamstrings and glutes. Starting out with just body weight. Starting out with just like a cone touch reach, just on one leg. Whatever works for you. These are all fundamental exercises. Step-ups, 12 reps a leg. Whatever works for you. Alternating legs. We're just working on stepping up, working the quads, working the glutes. And then lunges, could be backwards lunges. That's a great place to start for most people. You might have to hold on for balance in the beginning, but you're gonna work those movements. You don't need to start with the leg extension machine. You don't need to start with a leg curl machine. Start with big fundamental movements that are gonna give you the most bang for your buck. They're just compound movements that really work great. Yes, you can still train upper body. I'm not saying that you can't, but let's work on the movements that are gonna give you the most benefit in the lower body. And let's face it, the majority of the muscle in your body is in your lower body, and especially for women. So that's a really important look at that. And you don't need to do all four of those exercises in the same workout. You could work legs twice a week. That's in addition to cardio, but it could be twice a week. So it might be um, squats and let's say lunges on day one of your workout with other upper body exercises. And then um, another day in the week might be your Romanian deadlifts and your step ups. And that, that could be totally fine right? So, okay. So we work on our strength training as well. Then we're improving our overall hydration. This one's crucial. So we want to be able to say water in, water out. 
but we need to flush the body. We need to get that water in so the body can also expel water and along with that, waste. So when we urinate, our kidneys have filtered the blood and they're expelling waste. That includes bowel movements as well, but it's really important that we hydrate. So for most people, half your body weight in ounces of water per day, and most people that works out to be about eight to 10 glasses of water per day. All right, a couple of individual ones that we've seen work really well. I'm not gonna give you a lot of nutritional supplements, but a couple that we have seen work well is the daily fruit and vegetable blend. So it's super hydrating your body. So you're getting in more fluid, 22 organic fruits, vegetables, superfoods, lots of micronutrients, great for the body. The second one is daily omega-3 support. Daily omega-3 support helps support the free radical inflammation oxidative stress of omega-6s. If you have no idea what that is, that's okay. Tune into yesterday's show, episode 3007. It will walk you through what all of that is and why it leads to faster aging and yes, cellulite. So definitely check that out. Uh, a good daily probiotic support as well. Really good for the gut health because cellulite has been linked to inflammatory-based issues with the gut, but it's not the only thing I recommend. I mean, again, if you can run the big five labs to figure out if there really are gut health issues and mineral vitamin imbalances, et cetera, big five labs, I can't recommend that enough. By the way, all of these things are at stephencabral.com slash shop. It just takes you over to my virtual functional medicine practice where we work all over the world and that's Equalife. So it's just an easier um, URL, but it's just over to Equal Life. That's basically it. Okay, so I just wanted to give you just a couple um, nutritional supplements. If I had to, if I had to say one more that we've seen work well is Inflamasooth. Inflamasooth is ginger, boswellia, turmeric, uh, purple, sweet purple potato extract. So much more. That's a great one. So people use that as well. All right, let's move on to a couple more. Dry brushing. I've talked about this before. Been talking about this since like maybe 2010 for for cellulite. Dry brushing really can do a great job at moving the lymphatic fluid. Because when the lymphatic fluid, which by the way is only a millimeter to three millimeters under the skin, when that's congested, when it's stagnant, you're gonna look puffier. And the waste being given off by your cells is not gonna be able to be moved as well. So dry brushing, super simple. Bonus points, by the way, if you can do that in a sauna. So right when you get in the sauna, before you start sweating, very, very simple. I have a whole podcast on how to dry brush. Um, if you've read my book, The Rain Barrel Effect, I have a chart on how to dry brush. It's very simple. You basically just brush towards the heart, starting with the extremities or the parts closest to the heart, opening up those pathways, and then going all the way up. So I won't go through all of that today, but dry brushing uh, and sauna are both phenomenal. Dry brushing moves the lymphatic system, improves circulation, which you need for a cellulite which not to be confused with cellulitis, and sauna helps excrete toxins. We know that that's scientifically proven now and also great for circulation. Okay, next and last are certain heating-based oils, like they use in Ayurveda, that can be used for self-massage. Those can be highly beneficial for certain individuals. Now, we don't use them a lot, but what you would actually look for is called a kapha-based oil, K-A-P-H-A. It's heat and it's anti-damp or fluid. So they're often going to contain a sesame oil base, not a coconut oil base, which would be cooling for more of the pitta, but usually more of a sesame-based oil base, and it will contain certain heating herbs mustard seed, cayenne, others like that, that will bring heat to the ear, thermogenesis, the same herbs basically that we use in the fat lossity system internally, you can also apply externally. And if you, um, you can use it instead of dry brushing if you wanted to. They both do the same thing. They move, you wanna move the lymphatic system, right? Really important. Um, but with the massage oil, if you wanted to do that, just self-massage like a dry brush. Move the lymphatic system, get to absorb some of that oil and herbs, uh, and just, again, help move the fluid all around the cellulite. And it's not the only thing that you should do. I know that there's lasers and there's, um, there's uh, acoustic-based wave machines, all of those things can be helpful. They really can. But I'm not gonna recommend hundreds of dollars of treatments to potentially thousands of dollars of treatments when first, improve our nutrition, do a functional medicine detox, improve the main reasons for fat burning through something like a fat lossity uh, or the new product, which is gonna be called Metavolve. I haven't talked about that yet, but that's what it'll be called. Um, regular exercise and strength training, 
doing your dry brushing or self-massage, all of those come first. Your hydration, your nutritional supplements, they all cost less money than the fancy uh, laser-based equipment, but those can be used as well. But start with your foundation, build yourself up, then maybe you can work to the more uh, experimental-based ones. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, We've gotten so many more questions on the weekend host calls that I figured I'd do another show on this. As always, again, if the information's helpful, please do feel free to share this with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everybody. I thank you. Appreciate you. I'll talk with you tomorrow. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.